In this video, we're going to discuss stoichiometry, which essentially are chemical recipes and how to determine how much reactant you need to make a certain amount of product or how much product you'll make if you start from a certain amount of reactant. Let's say that you are on a desolate planet and need to produce water. And you have some hydrogen and some oxygen um, that came in your ship for rocket fuel and you need to produce water. And you need a certain amount of water. How would you calculate whether or not you have enough of your ingredients, hydrogen and oxygen, in order to produce the amount of water that you need? Well, the first thing is our chemical equation isn't balanced. And we've balanced this chemical equation. We, we demonstrated this one in the balancing chemical equations video. Uh, so I'm not going to go ahead and show again how to balance it. And let's say that you need a certain number of moles of water in order to grow the potatoes that you're trying to grow on the planet Mars, uh, assuming that you're Mark Watney, a fictional character in a recent movie, The Martian. So let's say that you're going to need 20 moles of water. Now, realistically, people don't usually simply calculate in moles. They usually convert it to some other unit of measurement that's a little bit easier for us to measure in the lab. However, on the nursing exam, you're only going to have a four-function calculator so it's not particularly convenient to do these types of conversions in that setting and you most likely won't be required to. So to get 20 moles of water, you would have to start out with 20 moles of hydrogen and one mole, I'm sorry, 10 moles of oxygen because two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen make two parts of H2O. Now, let's say that we had something that was a little bit different. So let's say that the question was, if you have three uh, parts or moles oxygen gas, how many parts water would you make? And so we would easily say, now that one's not as easy. You can't just look at it and decipher it in your head um, how much it's going to be. Actually, it's really not that hard. But if you wanted to do it with um, dimensional analysis that works even when you have fractional numbers, you would say three parts of O2. And we do dimensional analysis just like we did when we were doing a conversion. And that would be two parts of water for every one part of oxygen. And these numbers are coming from here. That would give me six parts H2O as an answer. So again, we're just putting the units for what we have on the bottom and the units for what we are trying to get on the top and canceling them out. So it's just another form of dimensional analysis. And this works with non-whole numbers. If you had decimal places, which routinely we do in chemistry, um, and you do this exact same 
uh, type of thing. In fact, let's do one on the next. Um, so let's say that we're going to do one with the combustion of ethanol. And now we're going to say if I have, if you have 3.2 parts or moles of C2H6O, how many parts or moles of uh, O2 would be required to react all of it. So this is a recipe and here I'm just saying, well, if I have this much of one ingredient to use it all, how much of the second ingredient do I need? If you're trying to make brownies and you have a brownie recipe, you can look at the proportions of the recipes and it will tell you that for one cup of flour, one cup of sugar, so much vanilla, you can make 12 brownies. And of course there needs to be cocoa in there also. So what if you have two cups of flour? How many brownies can you make? Well, you can make twice as many as you could with one cup. Let's say that you have a half a cup of flour, your recipe calls for one cup, then you just half all the amounts of all the other ingredients. And that's super easy until you come to eggs. Um, but either way, the calculations are not very difficult. This is exactly the same type of math. So the first thing I would do would write would be to write my information that I have, 3.2 parts of ethanol times, I'm trying to get oxygen, so three parts O2 over one part C2H6O, 3.2 times three is, is 9.6, parts of O2 required. So here would be our answer. Now, this type of calculation is literally just like doing recipes. It's not very difficult at all. It's only when you start adding the extra conversions that the math starts to get complex. And even then, it's only because you have to remember what conversion factor to use and whether you multiply or divide. But if you're doing this type of just mole to mole or part to part calculations, it shouldn't be at all intimidating. Uh, it's very easy to do. And um, that should be all that's required on the exam. Here is a stoichiometry review question. Given here is the chemical formula for cellular respiration. Notice that it's very similar to a combustion reaction and both produce energy. For the cellular respiration reaction given, if you had five parts of glucose, how many parts of oxygen would you need? Take a few minutes, pause the video, and do this problem on a sheet of paper. So here, we're going to start with our given five parts of C6H12O6. And I'm going to put on top what they're asking for. So they're asking for parts of oxygen. So I'm going to need that number, six parts O2. And then on the bottom, I need to get rid of the parts of glucose. And it's one part glucose reacts with six parts oxygen. So here I'll be one part glucose or C6H12H6. And in order to solve this, I will take five times six divided by one. Five times six is 30. So it's 30 parts O2 are needed.